Today we're taking a look at oscillations, frequencies, and how you can use physics to take down a tree with your hands. Today we're going to be looking at some physics. Physics, physics, physics. Physics, 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 physics. But today we're going to be exploring the idea of oscillation, frequency, and harmonic motion. Here's the basic idea. We're going to explore harmonic motion to see what it does to buildings and trees. How can you use that to your advantage? Can you be a lumberjack without an ax? Basically, that just is a repetitive motion of something that's moving or vibrating or bouncing back and forth. One of the most frequent scene in the world, I would say, is just strings on a musical instrument, a guitar. Mm -hmm. When that's vibrating, it's bouncing back and forth at a certain speed. And the speed that it's bouncing is what determines what note you get out of the string. Harmonic motion, as I understand it, is when you are adding energy into a system mm -hmm. at the frequency that it's already moving. It's very cool. So this is some stuff that I started learning about when I took a geology class once long ago. And our geology teacher talked about how at some point when he would go do some geological surveys, there were aspen trees and he would go out and he would knock over the dead aspen trees and no tools involved, no levers, no pulleys, no winches, anything like that. But by pushing on the tree at the right speed, you could actually knock over the tree. And so we're gonna be taking a look at what causes that to happen. So we're going to attempt to build a device that shows this. What we're going to do is take these blocks and we're going to elevate them on three different heights of the stick. So we're going to have one that's only about this high, We'll have one that's about that high, and we'll have one that's about that high. Maybe all of those will end up getting shortened. These sticks are very, pretty very, flimsy. Uh, yeah. But we'll see what seems good. In theory, it shouldn't matter what the lengths are as long as they're all different. <laughs> nice catch. Thank you. Didn't want to hit you. Oh, okay, right. that one's already unhappy. It's, these are fairly thin sticks. The idea though, is that I will be able to move the whole board back and mm -hmm. forth. And as I do so, depending on what speed I move, we'll have different blocks reacting to that. So. Okay. <laughs> so the difference see between the, top the wave one. and just the little, just like jiggle. There you go. So the top one is now moving a lot. The other two really aren't responding quite the same way. Yep. So let's see if I can get that middle one going. That is so cool. Look at that. So the middle one moves violently while the other two just kind of sit there. All right, now the small one. That's moving pretty quick. So there we go. Nice. Ta-da. That's actually working really, really well. Let's try it again. I'm going to go smallest to biggest. Okay. Small one moving. All right, I'm gonna slow it down a little. Nice. Now we get the middle, and now. That is bizarre. What's interesting on a geological scale that's applicable about this in the world of engineering is there have been times where earthquakes have hit cities and cities with lots of different heights of buildings where the shortest buildings didn't fall and the tallest buildings didn't fall, but the middle buildings all fell over they got shaken at their frequency to the point that they could no longer stand up. Perhaps not Imagine wonderfully being engineered building. on the top floor of this building. <laughs> so, uh, if, if this building were poorly made of steel and stone, ah! it wouldn't hold up too well. Concrete as it is doesn't really spring back. It powderizes when it gets hit by a Fortunately, engineers are really clever and have found a lot of ways to make even very tall buildings able to take mm -hmm. Uh, these kinds of forces. There's one in Taiwan that is actually incredibly yes. famous. The building is called Taipei 101, mm -hmm. and what it has is what's called a mass dampener. It's got a giant weight that's actually able to absorb some of the swing of the building. It's not fixed in place. Mm -hmm. It's held by, I think, cables. Think like a, a pendulum in the middle of a building. So it goes straight down the center. In fact, I bet we could even simulate the effect a little bit right here. Okay. So as it moves, 
this swings, I can even pull it back, but with this piece in there, it, it doesn't keep going at the same frequency. It mm -hmm. messes with the frequency, so it doesn't move as smoothly as it did before. So at a pattern that used to be bad for it and dangerous in taking it down, it sort of starts counteracting the, the movement at the top. As a comparison, same frequency he had before. Takes so little to get it rocking violently. Okay, and now with your mass dampener. Obviously, skyscrapers don't just have uh, a giant steel weight hanging on a rope outside the building, but... Much less. So this starts swinging, and it's, it's not swinging very far, but it's swinging quickly, and it's actually making the whole stick bounce along with it. So you just get, that messes up the harmonic frequency of it, the oscillation, and it doesn't bounce back and forth the same way. It's just taking the energy and redistributing it so it doesn't add on to the back and forth every time. So very cool application of, in this case, stopping the harmonic motion, whereas it takes so little to get that swaying what would be dangerously if it were a building. I wanna be at the top of that building, Whee! Now you said that this is an application that you can use on trees. Yes. Okay. So as my geology teacher taught us, by adding some force into the movement as it's swaying, you can actually add more and more force into it. And while these sticks are holding up pretty well, a dead aspen tree becomes a bit brittle and rotten. Nice. So I think we should take this out and try and knock over a tree. Take this out or just ourselves? Uh, us, this. Us. Not, us this. this doesn't need to come with us. Let's go knock over some aspens. Dead aspens, not living ones. So this is an aspen and it is not healthy. In fact- You can tell it's an aspen because of the way it is. Exactly. Neat. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. This is actually a dead tree. It hasn't fallen over yet, but if you look at it, there are no leaves on the branches. It has stopped drinking up water. The bark just comes right off. Nate's pushing down trees. I'm chasing sheep through an aspen grove, because why not? I don't want to scare them. I honestly don't think I'll get that close to them. I just want to see how many there are because they're loud. Oh, there they are. That's a lot of sheep. Hey guys. Oh. Ah! <laughs> they saw me and they are all just like, get out of the way. So I'm gonna start rocking this, trying to knock it over. A couple things to think about. You want a tree of the right height and that's just kind of experience. Like try it on a couple trees, see what you're able to push. Uh, you want one that's not too big around because if it has too much mass, you're just not gonna be able to add anything significant to the momentum. You want it to be dead enough that there's not too many branches or leaves up above because that's going to add more resistance and as you push, it's kind of just gonna bow like that in the middle and it's not gonna actually rock as much. You want the rocking and you want it so that whatever branches are there aren't touching other branches because that'll stop its momentum. It'll start pushing it'll just and it won't go all the way because it's gonna run into healthy tree. So here goes, let's start pushing this tree. Good luck. I'm just here as moral support. Now at the bottom, it doesn't look like he's doing anything, but up top, it's very angry. Oh boy, I would've thought it'd start cracking by now. Maybe it's healthier than you thought. Maybe. Smaller tree? It might just be not as... That's pretty bendy. Dead, as I thought. Oh. Let's try a different one. There's no way you and I are gonna be able to push it over, it's still green. Well, I explained the things to look for in a good tree, and the last tree was just entirely too solid. Uh, it, it was fairly thick around. I thought it was gonna work because it was rocking pretty well, but uh, apparently it hadn't been dead long enough to really start rotting, or maybe I'm just not strong enough. Both are very possible. We found a new tree that I think is going to be even a little bit more sensitive and has started to break down a little bit more on the inside. So tree number two, here goes. I hope I'm out of the way enough. 
It's going. Yeah, something's very angry. Are you taking it out by the roots? Yeah. Cool. The roots break off. And... Oh, I'm so close, but I need a break. Breathe. This one is definitely uh, breaking down at the root system where it has rotted the most. Ugh. Yeah, if you want to take a turn. It's so close though. We've like done it, it's just... So close. We're at a third tree, our second tree, we made a lot of progress, but then it tilted so far that it was hitting other trees and, in, and the roots broke actually to the point where it tipped. But because it had broken like that, it didn't tip back. So we couldn't get it to spring back and forth. And now I am very tired from trying to push over two trees. So this third tree is much thinner, but I don't know how close this one is to going over. It's currently being supported on this sort of L shape, which means maybe it's still quite strong down in there. And I'm sort of lower to the ground on this one, so I don't have the leverage to push as high. So hopefully this one will be more agreeable because it's thinner, but also I have kind of a worse angle and I'm exhausted. So here goes. <sighs> Yeah! Uh. Wait, you did it! Ha ha ha! Oh my gosh. Knocked over a dead tree. Woo, I need a nap. Proof of concept? Confirmed. All right, so we kind of killed Nate with that one. But what you can see is he wasn't fighting just the dead tree itself. This actually went down into the roots. So this isn't gonna work on a live tree. This is a really cool example of why. Even the roots themselves are completely dry and brittle and broken. And that is what Nate was fighting against. So you can see that he actually pulled up earth too. When the whole tree came over, all of these roots that were underground, they were dry, they snapped, and that's what fell. So it wasn't just Nate fighting against the tree itself. He was fighting against the ground and he won. Neat. Guys, that's it for today, but we've always got new cool videos like this coming out. Go ahead and hit that button right there to subscribe so you never miss one, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. Oh, my shoulder.